everybody. How are we doing tonight? Good, I hope. My <laughs> name is Jana Wolf. I am the um, nutrition director at GBMC's Comprehensive Obesity Management Program. I want to give a big thank you to you, the viewers, of course, for joining us. And I want to give a big thank you to ABC News um, 2 Studio for allowing us to use their beautiful renovated kitchen. And of course, our very own sleep chef. Hi, everybody. Great, great to see you this evening. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, like Jana said, thank you very much to ABC2 for use of this beautiful kitchen space. So we, it is the hollow, it is, we are in the Halloween season, guys. We are gonna make some fantastic bariat trick or treats for you yes. this evening. Yes. So and they will be sugar-free, low in fat. You can bring them to any of your holiday meals that are coming up. Um, you can even make them, we're going to make big pies tonight, okay? But you can make them in the smaller versions if you want to have something to nosh on during the Halloween trick-or-treat season. Absolutely, guys. If you're in that noshing mood, these desserts work perfectly. Yes. Right? You can make them in a pie. You can do them in a traditional smaller version like you would like a muffin tin. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are great, great treats. Uh, they're going to be healthy. They may even fool some of your friends as well. Ah. So, hey, when you make them... You know, try them out on family, see how everybody thinks, you know, and, and then tell them later on that, you know, hey, by the way, this is much healthier than a traditional version that you may be used to. And they might feel better eating them, um, not only because, yes, it's healthier, but they might not get the sugar crash. They might not feel like they have to go to bed after their meal. So this is a really good opportunity to kind of see what's out there. I actually want to tell the viewers today um, if you have your own sugar-free, low-fat recipes for anything sweet, then please post the link um, with what it is on our feed tonight because a lot of people are looking for extra stuff if they don't like what we're going to make tonight. We might want a chocolate-based or a vanilla-based um, right. something or other. So right. um, if you have something, please feel free to post it so everyone can share in the joy of something sweet. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Great, great points, Jana. Again, guys, this is... Really our goal for the evening is to give you some ideas and really get those minds going in terms of how can I eat, you know, I can still eat well, both pre-op and post-op, especially post-op, where you've got these, you've got desserts. I know I had my cravings, uh, still have them, they're still there. So uh, yeah, so we're gonna make some very simple substitutions here and you're gonna see they're gonna be very good uh, and they're gonna be really super simple to make as well. All right, let's do All it. Right. What are we making? Yes, I was going to say. So what we are making this evening, guys, is we are going to do uh, some traditional crust, but we're going to use an almond flour uh, instead of graham cracker. Uh, and then we're going to use those crusts to make a peanut butter pie and also make a pumpkin cheesecake. Yes, and Easy. we are using one of my favorite products on the market right now. I am a peanut butter holic. I know some of you are too. Um, PB2. We're going to get to that though. Yes. All right. Take All right. it away. All right, guys. So we are going to start off by making our crust. So our crust is super, super simple. Uh, what we're going to do is we are going to use our Roboku. You may have a Roboku food processor. You can pick these up at uh, really any uh, grocery store or any big box store will sell these to you. So one of our key things here, so we're going to use two cups. Uh, so before we get started, guys, one really important thing to note there's a big difference between, between culinary, between cooking and baking. The primary difference is being cooking is an art, baking is a science. Now, what do I mean when I say that? Well, cooking, you have a lot more creativity. I could add a lot more spice, I could back off a bit, I could add some more moisture, I could back off a bit. Where with baking, baking really is a science. That when they say two tablespoons of something, you wanna make sure you stick to that. Because that, that is gonna impact, that additional moisture is gonna impact the quality of your product. So when you're baking, it's really important to really, really measure and follow exactly as the recipe call, as, as the recipe dictates. I think that's where baking therapy comes in. Yes. Because it's so nice to have so much control over something and it, for it to come out perfectly. Absolutely. Um, whereas with you know the crazy husbands and everything that cook, I have a crazy husband that cooks, and um, it's it's just nice to be able to throw in stuff. But I personally like baking a little bit better. Yeah, baking baking it's very relaxing. It's very cathartic. I love yes. baking during the holiday season. Uh, it's just it, it's a really fun way. It brings everybody into the yes, kitchen. The family. Love the smell. Love the smell of the pies and the cheesecakes and stuff as it warms up. All right. So I guess that that being said, let's uh, let's get started let's cooking, get started. shall we? All right. So we are going to start off by making our crust. So we are going to use almond flour. We're going to use two cups of almond flour. Now, um, 
I want to just say thank you to Jess, Nick. Hi guys. Melissa for joining us. Jane, Nikki, Terry. Hi everybody. Thank I think you we so have much. some regulars on here too. Yeah, that sounds great. All right, guys. So as you can see here, I am measuring out one cup, and we're going to do our second cup here as well. Okay, and this is almond flour? Correct. Okay. So our second cup. Now remember how a lot of people have asked me about almond flour and coconut flour because of the fat content, um, at, which is kind of high. But um, since this is going into a big pan and you're not going to eat the whole thing, um, it's going to distribute out. So, you know, that two cups, you're only going to be having about an eighth of that. Right. Yeah. That's a very, very good point, Jenna. All right, then we're okay. going to do two tablespoons. I'm going to use melted butter. Uh, so when you're melting your butter, you want to use, you want to melt your butter over a, a low heat. You don't want to brown the butter. You just want to melt it. Uh, also, really important to note, uh, note here as well, guys, is that on your butter, if you look carefully, it will usually have markings of what, to, what a tablespoon is on each, uh, each stick of butter. Mm -hmm. So you'll see eight, traditionally it's eight tablespoons in one stick of butter. Uh, so it's about a quarter of a, of a stick of butter is traditionally two tablespoons. And you could use olive oil um, as an alternative as well. Absolutely. Let me get my other butter here. Pop that right in. So hey guys, this is a good, good thing to note here. My pan was a little hot. So what I did is I poured it immediately off of the flame and I'm just gonna allow it to melt off the flame. So the residual heat of that pan it's going to cause that butter to melt. And what I want to do is I want to brown my butter. I don't want to, I'm sorry, not brown my butter. I just want to melt it. I don't want to brown it. Very, very important to note there. So again, I just, I noticed my pan was a little too hot. I pulled it right off of the heat. I allowed the residual heat on the pan itself to finish melting that butter. Also tip guys as well, uh, for your cream cheese and for your butter, you want to leave them out and, and wait for about 15 minutes. That'll help them soften. To make everything go much, much quicker. All right. Okay. Then we are going to add our egg. So important thing when you're cracking an egg, guys, crack on a flat, flat surface. So quick, quick tap, quick crack. And that's in order to prevent shells, I'm assuming. Exactly. Okay. And you can also, guys, you can also crack into a separate pan or a separate bowl. And that way you avoid getting any shells in your uh, flour. All right, let's go ahead and mix it up together first. Get my okay. teaspoon of salt here. And you know, a lot of people ask about using sugar alternatives like uh, Truvia, Stevia, things like this, and the health properties of them. So you have to think of this as, um, are we choosing sugar or are we choosing a non-sugar additive? Um, which one's better? Which one's the lesser of two evils? I don't, I don't like to use the word evil, but... Um, even. Even. But if you think about it, the, um, the traditional sugar is going to spike your blood sugar. It's going to induce sugar cravings, um, and it will increase your weight over time. Um, our non-nutritive sweeteners, which I call them, they're the no calorie sweeteners. So equals stevia, sugar, um, equals stevia, Splenda, Truvia, any of those are gonna be um, no sugar, no calories, which is very good for the bariatric diet and for weight loss. Also, a lot of the studies that you hear about in the media, they do them on rats. They don't do them on humans and they feed rats a lot of that non-nutritive sugar. So it's hard to take those results and put them to humans, okay? If you take small amounts of them and you eat that over time, it will not affect your health. That's a very, very good point. Okay, gave you a little time to do that. Thank you. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. So then we're gonna go ahead and take our, this should be a bit more combined. It should be more of a, a, more of a ball. But I'm gonna go ahead and just pop this guy in here. So when you made it at home, um, yep, so when I made it at when home. When you pre-made it at home, did it come into a ball? It did. Okay. Correct. And I so think, I'm thinking we might need just more moisture in there. Yep, that's what I'm thinking too. Even some water. Yeah. 
But for our purposes, for our purposes, we're just showing you. We are just showing you guys here. Yeah. All right, and I do want to give a shout out to Cheryl, Nicole, Joe, Jessica. How's everybody? Justin. All right. So really what you want to do with your press guys is you want to go ahead and just kind of smooth it out and pat it down. And again, it's not going to be usually this uh, loose in your pan, but that's ultimately what you're looking for is just to have it sort of flat and layered through uh, on your pan itself. So if you put just pop mm -hmm. that in the oven real quick, sure. thank you guys. And um, Jess Williams did ask about um, the, the sugar-free substitutes awakening the sugar cravings. And kind of like I just said earlier, um, you know, for some people they do because yeah. they somewhat trick the brain into thinking, oh, I'm eating sweet stuff and then you don't give your body sugar. So it's like, oh, I want more right. actual sugar. Right. But guess what? It doesn't in a lot of people. Right. So if you want to do an actual live experiment on yourself and have some non-nutritive sugar-free sweeteners, see if it awakens your sugar craving. If it does, do not use them yeah. or use something a little bit more natural such as stevia. Stevia is made of a green leaf that's just dried out, crushed, and made into a powder. Yeah, okay. that's a great point. Yeah. Yep, that's a great, great point. All right, thanks, Jess. Let's grab our, grab our mixer here. Okay, and Chanel just joined us. Hello, Chanel. Hello, hello. All righty. Okay, so what are we doing now? All right, so now we are going to make our, so we've got our crust in the oven. Our crust is going to be in the oven for about 8 to 12 minutes, uh, 350 degrees. Uh, so you'll want, you're really, you're trying to dry out that crust. You'll see the butter mm -hmm. will uh, rise to the top of it. That's when you know it's about time to pull that crust. Okay. So 8 to 12 minutes, uh, 350 degree oven. That's ideally what you're looking for. Okay. And Kathy and Jennifer just joined us as well. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. All right. So next up, while we are mating our crust, we really want to wait for our crust to finish cooking. So, by the magic of television, Jen, if you'd be so kind. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. See how pretty. And should I bring out both of them? Please. That'd be okay. Great. So, ideally, guys, this is what we're really looking for for our finished product here. See how this is nice. It's hardened. You've got a bit. I've got to try to come up, come up the side a bit more. I'm gonna actually try to. Yeah, please go right ahead. My mother was upset last time because we didn't try the food. So, this is for mom. Yeah. And it's very good. That's right. Mm. It's very nutty. It has kind of a richness to it mm -hmm. um, that the graham cracker crust does have. So, you know, it's very similar. Agreed. And if you Yum. wanted it a little bit sweeter, kind of because the graham cracker crust has that sweetness from the graham crackers, mm -hmm. you can, of course, add a little bit of stevia as well to that. Yep, exactly, that's a great point. All right. So we're going to move on to our pumpkin pie filling. So for that, we are going to take a can of pumpkin. Now, important thing to note about this pumpkin. When you're buying pumpkin filling, make sure you buy 100% pure pumpkin. Not pumpkin pie filling, 100% pure pumpkin. And the reason... Yeah. Yes, um, pumpkin pie filling has a lot of added sugar into it. Um, it also has a lot of artificial flavors in it. Um, and they could add extra fat as well. So, you know, that's meant to just take the can and plop it into your graham cracker crust. This, we do a little bit more with it. But um, what's nice about this is also it's real pumpkin. So, um, you know, you're gonna have vitamin A, vitamin C, um, a lot of antioxidants, you're gonna have fiber in it, um, and it's gonna be pretty low carb as well. So, it's very good for you. This, Absolutely. This, um, winter squashes have really, really good health properties yep. for them. Yep, and pumpkin actually also, it's a great point about winter squashes. Yeah. Pumpkin also falls, from winter squash perspective, pumpkin actually also falls under the same category as butternut squash, spaghetti squash, mm -hmm. acorn squash. Yep. I wouldn't necessarily use any of those as a substitute for this, because uh, pumpkin really has um, sort of a, a more starchier characteristic that you want for this particular application. Yeah, yeah. very good. All right, so we're gonna add our pumpkin more pan here. And Terry just asked if um, almond extract could be added. It yeah, you delicious. can add a touch of, touch of almond extract in yeah. place of the vanilla or addition to the vanilla. Yeah. All right, so I'm adding my eight ounces of pumpkin here. And you'll note, guys, I have a paddle attachment on my paddle attachment here on my KitchenAid mixer. 
You could do this with a hand mixer as well. Just make sure you use that paddle attachment. That's the ideal to allow it to mix, thoroughly mix. Let me take a look at that pan. I just want to yeah. let people know some of the nutrition on it. Um, so a half cup, there is uh, about three servings in here. Half cup has uh, five grams of, or three grams of dietary fiber and only 10 carbs. For um, more of the starchier veggie like this, that's pretty good. Um, and you're not gonna be having a whole half a cup of it anyway, okay? And it's pretty low in calories as well. Yep, so I'm also using a light cream cheese here as well. So I'm gonna use eight ounces of light cream cheese. That's gonna go right back in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add three eggs as well. So again, we're gonna crack right on our flat surface there. Okay, and welcome to Joe and Lynette. Hi everybody, thank you, thank you for joining us. And you know what else I've discovered? There's actually maple ex extract, which mm. could be kind of interesting that in the pumpkin. Would be delicious with the pumpkin. Yeah, so if you find maple extract and you make this, let us know how it comes out. And I do wanna repeat that if you guys have your own recipes that you love and you have the links to them, you can absolutely throw them onto the feed here um, so everyone can see what everyone's yeah, cooking at home, okay? We got a touch of vanilla here as well. There we go. And we're gonna add some stevia. Uh, we'll do half a stevia to make sure I have my amount correct. Okay, do we need the recipe? it is uh, one teaspoon for our pumpkin. All right. I can't find We're gonna add our cinnamon next. Okay. And be careful with the cinnamon guys, a little bit of cinnamon is gonna go a really long way. Alright, I'm just gonna mix all this together as well with salt. So important to note guys, when you're using your mixer, what we want to do is we want to make sure that when we're using it, that we start slow and then build up. Don't start fast, that's how you get a bunch a face full of a uh, face full of pumpkin. And I have the recipe as well. Real quick, we want to scrape down our bowl. Go. Beautiful. Delicious. Okay. Scoop down here. Again, this would help everything to be combined. So we want nothing to stick too much to the sides. And of course, you know I have to try this. This comes from my childhood. <laughs> my mom not allowing me to put my fingers in. It's very good. Oh yeah. Yeah, because pumpkin on its own is so good. Oh, yeah, I agree. Remember, guys, start slow and then build up. And uh, Justin just said PB2 plus fat-free Cool Whip. Well, guess what, Justin? There you you go. are in for a treat because that's yeah, buddy. one of the other recipes that we're cooking tonight. Exactly. So you'll see maybe there's differences in our um, recipes, so you can post those, too. Absolutely, yeah, it's a great point, yeah. Justin. And then Jennifer was asking how much extract to use. Well, ah, we have the... good question. I want to say it's a teaspoon of extract to use. Um, Doesn't need much. I need my marketing help here. There we go. All right, so we got our bowl nice and scraped down. All right, we'll go ahead and scrape right in the center of our crust here, guys. Okay, and the vanilla extract is one teaspoon. Perfect. All right, so we're just gonna scrape right into our pre-made crust. So you wanna allow your crust to cool, uh, basically allow it to cool to room temperature. Very important, we're gonna go right into the middle of our crust. 
So it's always easier, guys, whenever you're doing these cheesecakes, is you want to start in the middle and then spread out. Very important. Well, that's good to know. Yep. Because I don't think I ever do that. Yep. Start in the middle and work your way out. Uh, more even, more uh, even spread. Yeah. Even distribution of mix. Beautiful. And the color on that's nice, too. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Look at that. Beautiful. All right. There we go. You see it so there. So if you had extra um, of the crusts, let's say, mm -hmm. could you make them into like leaves and put them on top of the pumpkin pie just for decoration? And would you do that after or before? Uh, when you put them into the oven? In, in terms of the, the, the crust itself? Yeah, like um, you know how people make those nice Instagram posts that I don't make? Um, <laughs> and they have the leaves, um, they'll take like the, the Oh yeah, yeah. That's, actually, that's a great top. point. Yeah, so you could definitely bake it, bake it flat, and use that. Use it like a cookie cutter almost. Yes. So making a cookie cutter. Leaf yeah, it's a great or, idea. You know, Absolutely. Something um, fall related. All right. If you'd be so kind, yes, go ahead and please. pop that in the oven. All right, guys. All right. So we're going to cook this at 350 degrees for about 35 to 40 minutes. And so you'll notice we did the pumpkin first because our peanut butter is our peanut butter pie is going to be a simple ready to eat recipe. Very, very important. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll be serving it. Ideally, you wanna refrigerate it for about four hours, but we're gonna whip it up here and we're gonna serve mm -hmm. it. Okay, great. And then at the end, we'll take a look at both of them. Absolutely. Okay. All righty. Okay, so Justin was asking, and this is, this is a really good question because you brought this up before we even started. Why does this use regular bake and not water bath? Hmm. That is a great question. And so uh, in this tradition, uh, typically when you make cheesecake, uh, cheesecake is traditionally cooked in a water bath uh, and typically done with a spring form pan. And you can certainly do that here. Uh, I decided not to use a water bath for this particular application only because uh, we're using um, smaller pans, lower, shallower mm -hmm. pans. If I, was, uh, if I was doing this with a traditional spring form pan, I would have used a water bath. That's a great, great question. A water bath is essentially a, a bowl of warm water that you use that basically helps neutralize the heat and prevents the bottom of the cheesecake from burning and it allows it to cook more evenly. Okay, and that's, um, I mean, we got two pies out of this. Right, so, exactly. So, you know, if you were to make one big one that was thicker, then yeah. Absolutely, it's a very great point. Okay, and Dominique, Sandy, and Suzanne just joined us. Thank Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining everyone. Joe says that it looks delicious. Thank you, Joe. Alrighty. So we've got our PB2, our friendly yes. PB2. Janet, you wanna? I will, I will give a little explanation of this because it's one of my favorite products. Um, it has the same serving size as regular peanut butter. And I know a lot of peanut butter holics out there. I ask all of my classes if you guys are peanut butter holics and I always get half the people raise their hand. This is 85% less fat than regular peanut butter. And remember, with the bariatric weight loss program, you wanna make sure that not only are you doing sugar-free, but you're doing low fat as well. Fat takes a really long time to digest in the stomach. It may give you a stomach ache after surgery. Also, um, with, with the high fat items, you're looking at a lot of calories for a very small amount. So two tablespoons for regular peanut butter is gonna be about 190 to 200 calories. This is only 45 calories. Plus, it doesn't have any added sugars. What they do is they take a bunch of peanut, peanuts, they crush them, and take the oil out of them that seeps out. It becomes a powder. So you can take peanut butter, PB2 and you can add it into Cool Whip, yogurt. You can even reconstitute it with water to make actual peanut butter. So it would be like two tablespoons of PB2 and one tablespoon of water, mix it up, and you get regular peanut butter. You can add that to your banana or apple. You can find this in the grocery store, in the peanut butter aisle, and it's awesome. Let me know how you like it. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Janet. Yes. All right. So we are starting off with five ounces of, of uh, cream cheese. Again, back into our uh, back into our kitchen made mixer here with our same paddle attachment. Okay. And again, I'm just going to start slow. Allow this. Whip some air into it here. And again, I'm starting slow on about a five. So we're just whipping the cream cheese yep. first. Yep, starting off with the cream and cheese. And that cream cheese is a little fat. Correct. Okay. 
And then we are going to add a half, uh, rather quarter cup of our Splenda. And while you're doing that, just has a great question. If I make these pumpkin pies in small single serving ramekins, like we were talking about before, would it be better to water bath them or plain bake? Great question. Uh, honestly, water bath. Okay. I, I would go water bath. You're, you're going to get a more consistent, it's basically going to help prevent the cheesecake from drying out. You're going to get a more consistent cooking with a traditional water bath. Okay, good. Um, with my particular application here, again, because the pans are so shallow, that's why I'm avoiding the water bath because I'm, I'm trusting that traditional cheesecake is about an thick. inch thick. Ours is about a half an inch thick, even, mm -hmm. maybe even less than that, maybe even a quarter of an inch. Yeah. So there's really, I'm not really too concerned about the bottom cooking because I'm mm -hmm. trusting that it's going to trust more, it's going to cook, cook cook evenly because it's, uh, uh, there's less filling per pan, so it's not as uh, hot. Yeah, and if you were using one of those smaller, exactly. you might even get two inches on that. So. Exactly. All right. All right, we've got our stevia. Okay. Give that a quick whip. And I'm gonna go ahead and add my Now for our PB2, I'm gonna go ahead and add a half a cup of this. Half a cup of PB2. Okay, and if you love chocolate, um, you can actually add the non-sweetened, um, basically cocoa powder um, into either the crust itself or you can add it into the batter that we're making. Absolutely, that's a great, great point. All right, so we are going to go ahead and add our, do, 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 do. we're gonna go ahead and add our PB2. So it is a quarter of a cup, I believe. Cup it is a half a cup of PB2. Okay. There we go, so half a cup here. All right, looks good. Cup of PB2. We're going to add three quarters of a cup of water. So it's going to help rehydrate our PB2. And I'm just going to look at the batter for a moment. Looks great. We're going to add our three quarters of a cup here of our PB2. And do, do, do. Okay. And Lynette was asking if we're going to post the recipes, and we will be posting them. They actually are posted um, already, but you'd have to search for them to find them. But we will repost. Mm, it's starting to smell good. And um, Justin made a great point that you can go to Costco and get the generic version um, for a much larger tub for five dollars. Ah, that's a wonderful point. Yes, of good the to know. too. Great. All right. I know that most places are now making the generic version of the PB2. Um, mm -hmm. I think Giant also has one, but you won't get oh, them nice. in a big tub. That's good to know. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this a quick scrape down here as well. There we go. All right, and Stephanie just joined us. Hello, Stephanie. Okay, and um, I do encourage everyone, if you're new to our Facebook Live group, you can absolutely post um, questions or anything that you've been wondering about, especially if it relates to um, baking. Okay. And uh, Melissa just joined us as well. Hello, Melissa. Oh, great, fantastic. All right, guys, so next up, I think it was Justin that hit the nail on the head. Yes. Cool whip, light. Light. All right. Okay, beautiful. Yes, delicious. So, right. and um, you can also take, and this I got from, um, from, of course, our comp Facebook group. Great suggestion, taking the Cool Whip, putting PB2 in it, and then just freezing that and using it as almost like an ice cream substitute. Sounds good to me. Yes. And you could even throw that onto some sugar-free pudding. I might find myself alone late at night tonight with some PB2 and some Cool Whip. <laughs> It's reflecting good. on my life. It's good. Let's see what's on the, let me see the nutrition yeah, on the please, whip right there. Go for it. Always interested in this. Very low. 
three grams of carbs, 20 calories, um, and you're not gonna be using too much of it anyway, so. All right, great. So remember guys, again, when we're whipping this together, we're gonna start slow and we're gonna build up in speed. And that's so you don't get splashed. That way you don't get a face full of uh, fluid. Yeah. May some, or may not have happened to me before. Maybe some people want a face full of Cool Whip. You want a face full of Cool Whip, man? Let it rip. All the way up. There you go. Yeah. All right, wonderful. That is looking delicious. So now, we'll go ahead and pull our... Okay. It looks beautiful. Oh, Very silky looking. Looks delicious. Delicious. Jenna, would you and like to do I, the of course, I have to do the honors. This is all because of you, mom. And for those who didn't hear, my mom was very disappointed that I didn't try the food last time. Mm. Oh, that's great. Mm. Mm. Very tasty. Yum yum. Very yum. good. Yum yum yum. It's a good thing we're not gonna have any extra guys. Sorry. <laughs> all right. So now we've got our bowl here, and all I'm gonna do is fold in my chocolate chips. I'm going to use four tablespoons of chocolate chips. Now, because we're not using that many chocolate chips, I didn't put in the sugar-free version um, into the recipe. So if you want to use sugar-free chips, that's perfectly fine as well. Um, or you can get a sugar-free bar and take like a small piece of it and just crush it up and put it in there. Yep. And so for folding, guys, all we're going to do is just come around, scrape around the sides of the bowl. That's really the easiest way to think about folding. You just want to scrape around the sides of the bowl like so. And actually, Brian McRae just joined us, and he was the one that taught me about Hey, the Brian, cool how are you? The Cool Whip and PB2. That sounds delicious. Yes, Justin makes a great point that Cool Whip is empty nutrition versus a banana. However, I have to say that when you're making, um, when you're in the, the holiday zone and the holiday mode, and everyone has their own really decadent um, desserts. If you come with a banana, it's not as exciting. You wanna be able to partake in the social act of you know, enjoying your sweets and your desserts, um, you know, if you're in the mood for it. Now, you can do a frozen banana ice cream if you wanted to. Um, some people don't love bananas, uh, but I do, and I think that the fro so basically what it is is just um, a frozen banana and you throw it into the food processor with a little bit of water and it comes out very similar to ice cream and you could even throw in the PB2 for, for that. that. Sounds tasty. All right, there we are guys. So we've got our pumpkin, we've got our peanut butter pie filling here. <laughs> Justin, Justin just did get have a good comeback for me though. Oh. That coming to dinner uh -oh. with a banana would be a good story. That's it. it would be, thank you Justin. <laughs> All right, so we've got our frozen peanut butter, we've got our peanut butter pie here, guys. It looks yes. delicious. Jennifer, it looks these are kind of pull the pumpkin pie yes. out of the oven. And um, Melissa was asking if we could use mini chocolate chips, and you absolutely can. So there we are, guys. These look okay. delicious. Let me turn off our stove top here. I'm going to go ahead and yes. cut these up. All right. As well. We'll cut them up. We'll try serve. them. Yeah, sounds um, great. And then. Justin has another question. If I wanted to make an apple pie filling, what would be the best way to go about this? Um, it's, I don't know if you want to um, go apple, into the apple, apple pie. pie. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that's, Justin, man, you've got some great questions. I gotta, I, I'm not gonna lie, man. It's, it, it's, this, this is, this is, uh, this is a, a tough question, but I'm really glad you're asking it because this is really the forum to ask these yes, type of questions. Definitely. Definitely. They, and again, guys, don't, if you feel like, oh, I don't really want to ask a question, my, my question is kind of silly or dumb or what I did, don't ask, please. That's what we're here for. Yes. We're here to help simplify this process, right? Because we all have questions. So to get back to the idea of an apple pie filling. So apple pie filling uh, traditionally is brown sugar, granny's with apples, mm -hmm. is what you'll commonly see in an apple pie filling. So really, you could look for substituting out stuff like stevia. Um, honestly, would probably be the best bet. I'd look to, to for some more sort of non-traditional, uh, non-traditional uh, fillings uh, to do, or sorry, non-traditional sugars to use. But uh, I would definitely go with like a stevia filling because you're still going to get that sweetness. That's really what you're, uh, really what you're looking to achieve is that sweetness. Ah, wonderful. Yes, and the interesting thing about sugar in itself 
is that it does give some properties, you know, that you won't get with um, stevia, you know, yes. or those sugar-free items. Absolutely. Um, you know, so it's always going to be a little bit different, unfortunately, but you will still get that same kind of taste um, as you would with, you know, your traditional apple pie. It's a very good point. Okay. And really, all you're looking to do, the primary thing you're looking to do with that apple pie crust is to offset the acidity of the apple with the sweetness of the sugar. So it doesn't necessarily matter what type of sweetener you use. Uh, you ideally want to focus on offsetting that sweetness. All right. Okay. So. Which one's first? I'll go with this one first. Go with first. the pumpkin. I'm going to go with the pumpkin here. All right. And this is our mm. peanut butter pie. Mm. Yum. Mm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Light. Taste of pumpkin. Mm -hmm. Sounds like Ramsey. <laughs> Just like pumpkin. This is also very light. This is going to be much lighter than that. Um, I don't even think that this needs the crust, to be honest yeah. with you. Plot twist. Yeah, yeah. plot yeah. twist. I, I think that it's fine without the crust, actually. Hmm. Let's see, I'll try. Yum, mm. yum, yum. And the pumpkin is great as well. The pumpkin does need the crust, I will say. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. Very good. Yum, Let's see good. if we have any more questions or comments. Um, and then we have, well, will the stevia melt down with the natural sugars to create a thicker filling, or is there a way to produce that without the brown sugar? Um, you will get the thickness from the um, pectin in the apples, um, you know, slight, like especially if you can stew them a little bit. But also you can add like a tiny bit of yeah. probably cornstarch if yeah. you wanted to. I know that it's starchy, and I tell you guys not to do the starch, but what do you have anything else to add to that? Yeah, that's the, I, I would say before you go all the way with uh, stevia, I would definitely say try it out, mm. do a little test batch, make a small test batch. It's a great see idea. See how it behaves. Um, just keep in mind it's not going to behave the same way traditional brown sugar will. Right. So what you may be able to do as well, candidly, is cut it. Right? So you use uh, three quarters stevia with a quarter brown sugar. Just mm -hmm. so you still get a little bit of brown sugar in there to help yeah. along the way. Well, actually, Melissa said that there might be a Splenda brown sugar mix. Right. But she vaguely remembers it, so we're not 100% sure. Exa exactly, guys. You'll let us know. And then um, instead of stevia, can you use sugar-free agave, which does exist. Mm. Um, and yes, you absolutely can. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. good. Absolutely. Well, these are really great questions. Yeah, guys, thank think, you so much. I think that they are really good to kind of go through because um, for us, we don't do a lot of baking on the show. So this was really one of our first times baking and making something a little bit sweeter. Absolutely. So it was a little bit of a challenge, yeah, I'd say. This, I, I yeah. agree, yeah, for sure. You know, and, and that's sort of the fun thing about these episodes, guys, is that again, please feel free to send in your suggestions. If it's something like, hey, I'm not sure how to cook this. Hey, I'm not sure how mm -hmm. to cook that. You know, we're gonna have our polls up as well. So you'll be on the lookout for those. They'll be asking, hey, I'm looking for these recipes, I'm looking for these ideas. I know the holiday season is especially hard for me. We're getting ready to come into that holiday season. You know, I love sitting around the table with the family and eating. Uh, it's really easy to get off track. It don't is. feel bad, you can get back on track. Trust me, it's happened to me. Slip, don't slide. Exactly, that's a great point, mm -hmm. right? Slip, don't slide. Uh, these desserts are designed. Definitely make them, bring them with you to the family functions. Uh, they're going to be really sort of a fun, light, alternative way uh, to a more traditional, heavy dessert that you may have. Um, and it's just, again, bring them to potluck, bring them to family function. And your family might love them. Bring yeah. enough for all of Absolutely. them to try it. Absolutely. And again, hey guys, if you make these recipes, you know, please post them to the page and let us know that you're making them. We'd love to see yes. your feedback. I want to see pictures. Absolutely. We'd love to see the pictures. Again, guys, thank you very much for tuning in this evening. We really appreciate all the feedback we get. We really appreciate all the attendance. Yes, thank you. Thank you again to ABC2 for the use of this beautiful kitchen, beautiful studio. Thank you very much to GBMC and Mindy for helping us put this on and doing this, allowing us to do this, and really giving everybody uh, a chance to ask questions and a fun forum to do this. Thank you again to my fantastic co-host, Jenna. Yes. Jenna, as always, for the win. thank you to our sleeve chef, Mike. Thank you and very much. And we will see you next Absolutely. time. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great rest of the evening. Take care. Bye, everyone.